Barbie is everywhere this summer. Like, the world cannot get enough Barbie. And that's including me, and this video is no exception to that. <laughs> So, in this video today, we're making McCall's Pattern 7757. I feel like I'm giving out a phone number at a phone-a-thon. Please call 7757 to donate today. But we're not donating, we're creating. And I just thought that this was the perfect pattern to make in honor of Barbie herself. I mean, it's just fun and flirty and it's got ruffles and I feel like it's something Barbie would wear. Yes, I'm making something so I myself can feel like Barbie because she's an icon. I have never worn a top like this, let alone made one. So one thing I'm very curious about with making this top is how we're gonna do the arm hole. Like how am I gonna move my arm? Am I, is it gonna have like a top, like, like a bandeau and then a ruffle over it or like, is it all gonna be one piece? I don't know. We're just gonna have to cross that bridge as we get to it. I think the pants will be pretty easy. It just looks like a standard pant. If there is such a thing as a standard pant, but the top is gonna be interesting. Only because I don't know what I'm doing and I haven't done it before. These are the colors that I bought to make the garment. Do they remind you of anything? Like Barbie and Ken strolling down the boardwalk in their leotards? Or do you think I'm just gonna look like a giant watermelon? Are these colors too watermelony with green, or some may say yellow, and this neon pink? At least it'll be a summery cute watermelon. I will say that this fabric and the green fabric is a bit stretchier than what the pattern calls for. The pattern calls for stable knits. Now, as a beginner sewer, maybe I can call myself an intermediate sewer, I don't know what a stable knit is, so I Googled it. And Google told me that the max amount of stretch to be considered a stable knit is 18 to 25%. And I would say that this is probably a tad bit more than 18 to 25%. I did not officially measure, but it's pretty stretchy. It doesn't have any structure to it, literally whatsoever. Some of you may be wondering how I'm going to sew such stretchy fabric, and I am not using a special needle. I am not using a special stitch. I'm gonna just use a straight stitch but I am going to use a special type of thread and that is called Elo Flex. You can see that. So Elo Flex is the special type of thread that I will be using. It is a stretchable thread. You can't like actually feel the stretchiness in the thread, but it does quite well with stretchy material and I just buy it. Um, they actually recommended this to me. So with the Elo Flex on the bottom, so on the bobbin thread, and then on the top, I just use a normal polyester thread, and I think it does a really good job with handling stretch. So I will also kind of show you what that looks like. Okay, we're only through step four and things. getting a little dicey because I'm about to move on to step five, which seems easy. Turn pockets toward front along seam line. Press, baste upper edge in place. Seems easy. However, maybe it's just that I've never put in pockets where I'm also putting in an elastic waistband, so I, I haven't had to like turn under top. Well, let me just show you. Okay, this might actually be a little hard to show, but here is my top. Here's my front, back, here's my pocket. So I wanna turn this to the front and then baste it so it is attached. But I have all this up here and I just wanna make sure that when I fold this over with the elastic that it actually covers the pocket. I'm gonna to have to go back and measure that and make sure that I baste the pockets in the right spot because we don't want the pockets 
not like attached to the waistband. Like that's just messy. And did you guys even notice that what I'm wearing is, you know, Barbie pink? We're wearing Barbie. This is the week that Bar the Barbie movie comes out and I'm wearing Barbie pink all week. So outfit number one. So I guess in other words, I just have to make sure that the pocket is actually along the seam line of the elastic casing. And I'm gonna have to remeasure the fold line so that I actually do it right. Okay, so here's my pattern piece and here is the fold line, but the fold line is not the seam line. The seam line is actually going to be, so if I, if I pretend this is my actual fabric, how this is gonna go is I'm going to fold, my seam line is actually gonna be one fourth inch from here. Okay, long story short, I have my pocket. This is the front. Like I'm going to fold one and a half inch in. That is the fold line. And then this is gonna go up one fourth of an inch. So actually this will be more like that. And then it'll be catching like the pocket will already be in here. So this is actually my seam line, which I think is about where I want the pocket. And as usual, I made that a whole lot harder than it actually needed to be. So I'm gonna get the pockets attached. And then step number six is for easier insertion of elastic based seam allowances in place at casing area. So I'm just going to take my seam allowances and baste it to the actual fabric. Okay, I am actually not looking forward to doing step number seven, and here is why. So step number seven is to actually make the casing for the elastic, and these are my pants. They're quite stretchy. I might have picked fabric that was a little too stretchy, so essentially I need to like fold, like I'm basically making a hem, like, I'm folding it in and then I'm gonna fold the raw edge under. And this is very, <laughs> it's like very stretchy. Like I feel like it would be hard to do that in my lap. I have to measure like how far down the fold line is because I did not mark it. We've been through this. I'm gonna give you a pro tip on what I like to do um, to make this a little bit easier for myself. Okay, here's my big pro tip. So I used one of these ironing boards. Oh, my ironing board makes noise. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> Can you hear that rattling in my ironing board? Um, anyway, it's like a sleeve ironing board. And I just like to put the hem like up on a flat surface. And I think it just makes it a little bit easier instead of like trying to do it in your lap or especially when you're working with circular items like a waist, like it goes around in a circle. So I just find it easier to like isolate the part that I'm actually working on. So I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'll have my ironing board and then I will bring in a part of what I need to work on. And you can see that it just like lays so nicely across here. Um, and what I'll do is I know that the fold line is one and a half inches. I'll fold one and a half inches and then I know it needs to go up a fourth of an inch. So that would actually, if I take this and move this another fourth of an inch, that would be like to right there. So then I'll just like fold this in and then I'll measure. I, I folded it in a little bit too much. Yeah, so right there. And then I will just put a pin in it. And then I'm gonna sew across this line and then I'll make the casing for the elastic. We're folding, folding, and then sewing. <laughs> Easy peasy, right? Like one elastic casing coming right up. Well, I got the casing done and I gotta be honest, this looks ginormous. <laughs> like this is ginormous. I mean, I am very curious to see how this is gonna fit. I don't know if you can see here, I got the casing in. I did leave a little spot right here to where I can measure the elastic or actually like put the elastic in so I didn't fully close it shut. All right, let's get to measuring the elastic. I do, however, love the color, and I even love the color with this tank top, so this might be a multifunctional pair of pants here, but 
I'm gonna start measuring the elastic around my waist to figure out how long I want it to be. Okay, once I have the elastic measured to where I want it, I'm going to add an inch so I have space to sew it together. And then, pro tip, I always add a safety pin which just helps weave the elastic through the casing. So I'm going to get the elastic in the casing and then try it on and see how it looks. Let me work on that. coming undone. It fits together just like that. These are still huge. I just saw a blue jay outside and wow, blue jays are like my spirit animal. So step number nine, which is the second to last step, is to sew the casing closed. So I have this open where the elastic is and I'm just gonna sew it shut and then I just have to hem and then I'm done. Step number 10, turn up hem based finish. And we're almost done. Two more steps. And we're finally on the last step of hemming the leg. So what I've done is sewed one fourth inch inside the raw edge. And I'm not exactly going to follow the directions here. Essentially what I'm gonna do is turn up about an inch or however much my hem length is. And then I'm going to turn in along the stitching and then I'm gonna stitch very close to this edge and then I will have a hemmed pant and then I'll be done. So I'm making top B, which is this double ruffled top. I just think it's so cute. You can see back here it has the double ruffles and the pattern piece is two pieces, a front, a back, and then a front and a back top and bottom ruffle. The way this pattern pieces are laid out on this fabric honestly stresses me out. Like I don't love when you have to turn fabric or turn the pattern piece over and keep cutting. Like this is not one continuous piece. There's one pattern piece and you have to like turn it over. And honestly, cutting out my pattern pieces like that really stresses me out. Like, I don't like it. So I will show you how I cut the pieces on the fold, just on the crosswise fold instead of the other fold. So as you can see, I have my fabric laid out with the selvages on the side instead of at the top. So that's how I am putting my pattern pieces on the fabric. I have each one turned over on a different side. So right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side. And just like that, I have the back and front pieces sewn together at the side seams. And then the second direction was to just one fourth inch stitch around the armhole so that it does not stretch, which I did do. So I don't know, is it just me? But I feel like every time I look at this fabric, I feel like I'm staring into the eye of the sun or something. It's just, it is so bright, but it's also like a Beyonce, like Oscars moment when she sung, I don't remember the name of the song, but it was in honor of Venus and Serena, the Williams sisters tennis movie. Yeah, this is very green, very bright green. Maybe it looks like yellow. Um, if you're wondering what these two pins are, I always pin the outside of the fabric or the right side because the inside looks very similar. And just so I don't get confused, I always pin the outside. And then this has a double pin because I just want to mark that it is the front. I know that, yes, 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 for you experienced sewers, you're gonna say that the notches can dictate single notch, double notch, but I don't know, it's just easier for me to identify a pin. 
So that's why I have two hands. For this project, you will need bias tape, like this, um, half an inch bias tape, and that is to finish the armhole edge. So that is what the next set of directions look like. And isn't this like almost a perfect match to my fabric? You can't get closer than that when it's like this crazy color green. So before we go any further with this pattern, buyer beware, you will need bias tape. However, what it doesn't specify on here is single fold or double fold bias tape. I bought double fold and I'm pretty sure you need single fold bias tape. I'm gonna read this again just to make sure and verify it's not on here. It says, notions, three-fourths yard of one-half inch bias tape. It doesn't say double, doesn't say single. I bought double, but I just kind of turned it into single by cutting it in half and folding in the pieces. So I was able to make do, but single fold bias tape, not double fold for this pattern. Now that I have the correct bias tape, I have it pinned around the armhole edge. I put the crease 5 8 inch in and I'm just gonna sew right along that crease line. Once I have the binding sewed on, then I'm just trimming this edge to 1 4th inch. Obviously I have this sewed along the outside or the right side. And now I'm just turning it in I'm just gonna turn it in like that. And then I'm gonna sew right along here and you won't be able to see anything on the outside. So here's what a finished armhole looks like with the bias tape turned to the inside. You can see on the outside, looks clear. Bias tape to the inside. Now, isn't that the most beautiful armhole you've ever seen? <laughs> Half of an armhole <laughs> minus all these threads. <laughs> Hi, if you're wondering why it looks like I ran through a thunderstorm, well, it's because I did. And this is me after drying off for the last like 30 to 45 minutes. And also I only had to walk like two and a half blocks home, but you know, this is my first experience getting caught in a thunderstorm in the city. Sans umbrella, but you know, the show must go on. So I finished the ruffle. This is the top ruffle. <laughs> You're probably like finished, like they don't look finished. Well, thank you. What I mean is I got the front, and you know this is the front because of my two pins, but I got the front and the back attached. And I also did a narrow hem to finish, which is what the directions call for. And if you want to take a little bit of a closer look, this is what my narrow hem looks like. And I'm not gonna lie, I think it actually looks uh, pretty good on the side. Oh, and if you're wondering what all these tiny little feather-like threads are, these are actually my markers. So this is where one of the circles was. And then I actually used some thread to mark where the fold line is. But I've actually made it to step number eight. So this is the bottom ruffle, which is the longer, like longer ruffle. And I pinned it to the top. So if you can see, like this is my armhole and this is the ruffle that's pinned to it. And I'm just going to baste along the fold line. And just to give you another look, I did match up the circles to the edge, like the pattern describes to the edge of the armhole. And then on the front, I also almost matched up my notches to sew right along the fold line, which I did kind of mark with some of these threads. But if I take my pattern piece, I'm essentially sewing six eighths of an inch, basting six eighths of an inch. Guys, we have what is starting to look like an actual top. Like, oh yeah, it's coming together now. Okay, so yeah, I don't know if you can see, but I only basted, like this is still kind of a free edge here. I did not sew around the shoulder part, but yeah, here you can see this is the armhole. And then the top just kind of comes together like this. 
and okay so next step is to get the top aka shorter ruffle even on top of this well i've got the second ruffle sewn on there and honestly this is starting to look kind of cute and so you can see what this looks like close up like on the actual bodice part. I don't know if you can see this, but there is three layers of fabric. And this is gonna eventually become the casing, which I think that's kind of weird, to be honest. And definitely basted throughout the whole length, even the sleeve part. But how, like, to form the casing, like, this is the fold line. So I would fold here and then, like, turn this in and then fold like is that enough for the elastic okay there are legit three layers of fabric here to like fold over to make the casing for the elastic and i kind of think that's crazy like bonkers like it's not going to work so i'm like what am i gonna do here i think i'm gonna have to cut back some of the layers that is not in the directions but I think that's what must be done. There's no way I can make a casing for elastic with three layers of fabric. I don't care how thin the fabric is. Yeah, I uh, I think that's what I'm gonna have to do, but I might think about it a little bit more. But what also I think is so weird is that I Googled this pattern and no one seemed to be complaining about it or making any comments about it. So I'm like, is it me? <laughs> like, what is happening here? But I definitely cannot make a casing for elastic with three layers so something is something's got to give so i am not even barely a third of the way done pinning the casing and i have to say i don't love this it was really difficult to pin around the armhole and like the width of the casing is like a half of an inch and the elastic is like three-fourths of an inch and just with so many layers of fabric I just am very curious to see how actually getting the elastic through the casing is going to work. So I'm gonna keep going here, but very concerned with how I'm actually gonna get the elastic to go through here with so much fabric to go through. Oh my gosh, I have 25% left to go and I had to put the hair back. I had to put the hair back because this, doing casings is definitely not my favorite part of any project, but it's always good to try new things. Well, the casing is set, and honest to God, this fabric is so bright. I think it should come with a warning label. Like, <laughs> like, do not attempt to sew in low lighting because my eyes are like hurting. Like, I feel like I'm staring into the sun. And I might just glow in the dark in this fabric, but I don't know, that'd be kind of cool. So, getting ready to cut the elastic and the pattern has this elastic guide, and as I'm wrapping this around myself, this is ginormous, I don't need this much elastic, so definitely gonna cut about half of it. Let me tell you, this elastic better fit in this casing, cause it's not that big, there's a lot of fabric in there, I hope I don't run into too many issues, so stay tuned. Well, today is a new day and I'm just feeling so much better about this whole thing and I kind of got over my complaining of the casing and the elastic because it looks so good. Like, I just think it turned out better. I wasn't really sure how it was gonna turn out, but I think it looks really good. It almost looks like a girl's skirt. <laughs> my legs were always too long for this, but I think things really worked out. This is what it looks like on the inside. You can see the armholes. Yeah, not quite sure how to like get this thing on. Like it was a struggle. I think you just kind of like pop your arms in, maybe. Yeah, I think you pop your arms in and then put this over your head. I'm not gonna show you what it looks like just yet because I want to have a grand reveal. So I just, last step, I put the casing in the bottom and I'm just gonna put the elastic in and then we'll put both pieces together for the very first time. Oh, and I'm going to an event tonight and I can't wait to wear it. <laughs> so like I do with threading all elastic, I put a safety pin through the elastic and then I left a little opening here to start threading this through. Then I'll show you what it looks like. I don't know 
if it looks like I'm going to a charity event or an 80s party, but also don't know how I'm going to get this off, but we love it.